The Arishar, Irma Cat Interview, First Part Hello once more, thank you for being here with me again. I hope you are all doing very well. I am Marie Swaru. In this video, I interview Arishar, a 300kg, Irma male tiger who is part of his culture's expeditionary force in Earth's orbit. He is one of the communication officers on board the Irma Starship Avian 1. The Irma right now have one large starship in Earth's low orbit, and have been here for several years now, mostly monitoring their star seeds and everything that is happening on the planet right now. The Irma are a highly emotional and empathic large cat race from the first planet, which orbits the star Vega some 25 light years away. The planet is called Avian and so does their starship in its honor. Just a few months ago the Tejetan Queen Alanim Alexandra, and the Irma King Rua of Avian, signed a cooperation treaty that renews the age-old treaties between the two cultures which have been friends for a very long time now. Starship Avian 1 in the present day follows the same orbital altitude and path as the Tejetan heavy cruiser Talika which I am on, but only at a slighter higher altitude to avoid collision hazards, and their presence there is mostly to escort Talika. The Irma are officially a federation race, but are considered even more rogue than the Tejitans. They cooperate with the federation whenever they want, and simply go their own way whenever they decide so, making their own rules, and although the federation has issued many warnings to them, they don't even bother to answer back. The Irma have their own interstellar federation, loosely translated as the United Federation of Felines, or United Federation of Cats, and are so powerful that the federation itself sees them as a problem, because of their constant tendency towards disobedience, but it never dares to challenge them. But who can mess with stubborn and super proud 300 kilogram cats in armor anyway, as I always say? Because, oh my! They are really impressive, your heart pounds when you just look at them, and that's a severe understatement. They can be quite egocentric and self centered, and they know this, they even love it. But it heavily contrasts with their high empathic and emotional skills reflected in their need to protect everything they love, and they openly work against injustice. They are very loving and demonstrative, so much so that they can even be mushy and corny, and this turns out to be very emotional, because they are always so superlative in everything, including what they say, and how they always demonstrate their affection in such an overt and open way. A few days ago, Arishar, one of Starship Avian's communication officers agreed to comment for my video on the Alfreton people and their historical inconsistencies. I will leave a link to that video around now. Today, just a few minutes before I start writing this video, Arishar has agreed to answer many questions related to Earth and space. Bear in mind that it is me who is writing, from my recorded answers, and bear in mind that Arishar is a large cat and their lips are different so they speak funny, with some pronunciation problems, so his answers may not be as long as we would wish them to be. The interview was verbal, on audio, and not written, so it's me who is translating his answers into English, therefore it is my wording. As follows. How do you see and interpret everything that is happening on Earth? We feel that the Federation is confusing us all, everyone on Earth and in space, and what is apparently happening may have nothing to do with their final intentions. We prefer to observe and wait, although there are many things we simply cannot tolerate. The fact that the Federation is not clear as to what its intentions are with Earth makes us feel it's nothing good. What do you think really happened regarding the history of the Alfreton people of Centauri? 
We believe what really happened was a civilization reset on that planet, all guided by the Federation itself, and all the stories about invading reptiles are just a fabrication for drama. We strongly think it is all happening again on Earth, only adjusted to what is needed there, as what is going on on planet Earth looks almost exactly like what is said to happen on planet Phaeton. We think that what really happened on the Centauri planet is a simple change of plans and intentions of the Federation itself, for Phaeton, and that fabricated slavery past is a simple justification for a change of paradigm. Although we fully accept that all exploitation and suffering of the people really could have happened there, or happened there, all sanctioned by the Federation, caused by it, or by the Alphartan people themselves as part of their soul and mind evolution, as is happening on Earth right now. How is your interaction and relationship with the Galactic Federation? We are diplomatic with one another. But we know they don't like us very much, as we are prone to disobedience but we have no intention of following rules and orders which are not fully explained why they are there. If there is no logic to those rules and regulations we will not follow them, and we couldn't care less what the Federation says, or what punishments they may try to impose on us. They cannot get to us, they cannot manipulate us, and we simply no longer care. The reason why we still follow some rules is simply that we want to coexist cooperatively and peacefully with most of the advanced civilizations that are part of the Galactic Federation, but we will not tolerate being patronized nor ordered what to do. We may follow some rules simply because we agree they are logical, the illogical ones, not so especially because we see that our ethics are superior to the Federation's. We are direct and transparent. What we say is what we think and who we are, and we do not need to manipulate anyone using wise obscure agendas and so on, as the Federation is so keen to do. No one tells us what to do. What is your position towards the Federation regarding Earth? We dislike how the Federation is handling Earth's problems, although we do understand the need to protect what the people of Earth desire to manifest for themselves there as an experience, yet we strongly disagree with how the Federation is protecting the people's manifestations because we can see how the desires of the people the Federation protects so much are being manipulated by the Federation from above. So, however, you see the problem, it always comes back to the Federation manipulating everything. Would you like to leave through me and my YouTube channel an official statement of your position, or your thoughts or message to the Federation? As a message to the Federation, it is not necessary as we do not wish to involve you with our problems and with our tense relationship with the Federation. However, a message to the people of Earth, with an implicit message to the Federation who surely will listen to it as well, may be considered shortly. I do not discard it. What do you think is really happening and why? Seeing the whole situation from the beginning. It is all the manifestation of the collective thoughts and wants of souls. I agree with you on this one. And as you say, we cannot know what really happened as everyone interprets history their own way. But, I strongly prefer to believe our Irma history, not only because I'm one of them, but because knowing our people, we do not need to fabricate false stories, lie to justify our actions, or manipulate anyone into believing what we want. If we want something, and if we see that it does not hurt anyone, or it does not go against our ethics, we simply take it. We are direct, 
We are strong people, and we don't need to manipulate. That's for weak cowards. We think that the Great Expansion never took place as described. There may have been a big expansion of Lyrian space human people, as a mass immigration event perhaps, but humans in space definitely did not originate on planet Lyra. They have been all over this galaxy forever, and I know the concept of something always existing, with no beginning and no end is hard, or impossible to understand for the average human mind. Being a warrior race, there is the belief here that everything is resolved by force and weapons. Is this so? Have you had many conflicts with other races, besides the Alpha Dracos, that have been resolved? We are a strong warrior race. We know that we are classified as an apex predator race, along with the Alpha Draconians, with whom we've had many battles in our past but with whom we are at peace now, and with good diplomatic relationship, not without or mutual problems of course. There comes a time when you must defend yourself and all those you love. There is no better soul than the one who knows its ethics and follows it with full honor and congruency. When it becomes a question or a choice between what you know is correct and worth protecting, and going against an immoral invasive force, we will not hesitate to use our sword. There are many invasive amoral races in the galaxy, but they dare not come close to our cooperative feline conglomerate, thanks to our super strong military force. But we always operate with high ethics, protecting the weak, respecting our treaties, and overall being highly honorable. The Galactic Federation likes to think it is they who have managed to eradicate the presence of strong regressive races at least in this galactic quadrant, yet with their dubious ethics, obscurity and manipulative methods, they couldn't have achieved that on their own, without our feline help. Our military might rivals the one of the Federation itself. It is we who are keeping those regressive races from most out of this galactic quadrant that is what our sword is for. And this is one of the strongest reasons why we know the story of the Alphartan people is nothing but a manipulative federation lie, a narrative being repeated on Earth today, and so is any regressive force who is said to be about to invade Earth, as we would know it and we would never permit anything like that to happen. We sold everything diplomatically. We only use force when cornered or when we have no other choice. Yet I'm aware that even diplomatically, our presence and force are enough to persuade anyone to respect the Irma way. The interview will continue in the second part. Notice how such a prevalent and dominant race, with its own strong feline federation, is omitted everywhere in human culture, knowing that they could exploit the Irma and their strong charm even for business, for movies, and so on. But they are hardly even mentioned by all those so-called UFO experts and their mafia designed to control the narrative. Where are the Irma? I ask. I see that they are being omitted from the public view on Earth simply because the Federation who is controlling all the narrative, does not want to give any publicity to a disobedient and super strong dangerous race such as the Irma and their feline Federation. The Irma make their own rules and are simply too large for the Federation itself. And as usual, the Cabal and their Federation controllers, hides, cancels and omits everything they cannot control. Thank you for watching my video, and for liking and subscribing for more. I appreciate it a lot. And I hope to see you here next time. With much love. Your friend. Marie Soiru.